I'm back! Aha! I have it on good authority that all D&D YouTubers must at some point produce a character build video. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. Best polearm new Ultimate Fighter 10 million damage skill monkey Dragon Punch speed build 2019. What a load of twaddle. None of this easy mode rubbish. So, let's see what we can do. Where to start? At the bottom, of course. Ah, the commoner. 110 pounds of averageness. Unremarkable in every single way. Size? Average. Hit die? Average. Skills? None. Languages? Usually common. Typical. They're so boring and mundane, in fact, that hardly anyone even bothers to use them. They're barely a challenge for a first level party, unless they start whipping out their pitchforks. Modifiers? None. Hmm, maybe we can min-max that. What's the best class for a character who's just meh? Then everything. Tens in every stat. Well, they're a lot less mundane than you might think. Oi, put me down, put me down. That's quite enough out of you. Help, help, he keeps me in a box. A box with trolls. Let's do this video properly, shall we? At least put me in the thumbnail. Ugh. In older editions of D&D, you needed high enough ability scores to play certain classes. These restrictions were removed by 4th edition, but even then the player's handbook advises against using a character with super low stats. 5th edition doesn't say that. Every class has one or two primary ability scores that it uses for its features, spells or whatever, and they kind of expect you to start out with at least a 14, but you don't have to. It can make many features a bit rubbish, or hardly ever work if the score is low, and if you fail and miss all the time, it can make the game a lot less fun. Unless you use some guile and cunning of your own. A wizard with a 10 intelligence. Some wizards weren't smart enough or brave enough, but were wizards nonetheless. Think Neville from Harry Potter, or Rincewind the Cowardly Wizard from the Discworld series, or basically anybody in Hufflepuff. Other classes like Fighter and Rogue are combat focused and they rely very heavily on their stats. Spellcasters have more options, but the wizard in particular can be built so only one feature is really affected by your primary stat, so it makes the best candidate for a Mr. Average build. Let's get right to it. Tens down the line. Nice. But with tens, we're trapped. In 5e, you can't multiclass without 13s in your prime stat and those are the new class you want to go into, so I think I've just softlocked the character. Whoops. Tens also restrict the armour we can wear. Well, that's fine. Wizards don't get armour anyway. What else is affected by ability scores? Encumbrance? Not really bothered. Jump distance? Don't think anybody even follows the rules on that anyway. There's a few monsters and spells that could affect our intelligence score, but that just puts us in the same boat as someone who used it as their dump stat. Feats? Ah, now this is a bit of a sticking point. We're going to want to take feats rather than the stat bump, because we don't want to increase our scores. But... A few need a 13. Arguably, probably one of the best feats for this build, Ritual Caster, will take until level 8 to qualify for, and then you can't get it until level 12. Oh dear, never mind, we'll come back to feats later. My modifiers all equal 0. Without anything to add on, we're left with a straight d20 roll, which gives an average result of 10 and a half, which seems fitting. We do have a little bit of help from the good old proficiency bonus. This starts at plus 2 and increases as you level. Anything we're proficient in gets this tiny little boost, which is super helpful for this build. As a wizard, we get a couple of simple weapons, int and whiz saves, and what, two skills? With this build, your weapon attack roll is a mighty plus 2 to hit, with nothing to add to the damage. So, we can basically scrap using weapons straight away. A dagger might still be helpful to cut ropes or whatever, and the equipment in the packs can always be used in crazy and fun ways, so we'll keep those. Spellbook? and then either an arcane focus or a component pouch. Fine. Plus two to intelligence and wisdom saving throws. Okay, there's not a lot to do with int saves anyway. Dex, charisma and con are the most used saves in the game. The bump to wisdom might be helpful in some cases, but we're still pretty much reliant on whatever we roll. A zero con is also going to make concentration checks a bit of a challenge. We'll have to keep that in mind when we pick our spells. Right, skills. This won't be much of a problem. Pick two from Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine or Religion. You can kind of do what you want here. You're only going to gain a plus two to train skills and all the others are going to be stuck at zero. The thing is, almost all of the intelligence skills, Arcana, Nature, Religion and History, are about knowledge. Most of the time, you only use them to recall info on a location or a monster or maybe a person. The DC for knowledge checks is usually pretty low and you can have a decent stab at most of them without needing a high modifier. If you get an average result with a trained skill, that'll at least give you a 12, which will normally get you some decent lore. 
If there's no time restriction, you could talk to NPCs to see what they know, go to the library, or use the researching downtime activity. The researcher feature from the Sage or Cloistered Scholar background also covers this one nicely. So it doesn't matter if your knowledge checks are pretty weak, you can still get there. Investigation is the odd one out when it comes to intelligence checks, and it's mostly to do with finding and understanding clues. Even if you try not to metagame, for the most part this is going to be based on player deduction and questions anyway. And the DM's only likely to call for a roll if you're totally stuck and need a hint. Other than the main skills, the book suggests some other intelligence checks you might be asked to do. Let's take a look. Communicating without using words. Er, uh, any language type spell could bypass this one, and any warlock or ghostwise halfling in your party could just use telepathy. You might even get away with animal handling in some cases. Forging documents. Well, rogues, charlatans and criminals can do that, and if you have a forgery kit, that will really help you out. Estimate something's value. Um, just barter with the shopkeeper and see what you get? I can't see this being much of an issue, and you could always use the identify spell to find out what something's really worth. Pull together a disguise. Disguise kit anyone? Or even the disguise self spell would really just deal with this without you needing to make a skill roll. Winning games of skill. <laughs> if you really want to, you can get proficiency in certain gaming sets to help here too. But I can't see this coming up very often. What's the best background for this build? Folk, hero, urchin and hermit fit well thematically for our average Joseph. You could also take sage or charlatan for the feature and to fill in those intelligence gaps. Charlatan also helps explain the lowest score. Maybe the character isn't really actually a wizard. Let's do that one. So charlatan gets us deception and sleight of hand. Great. Moving on. Spell attack bonus. Int plus prof equals 2. Uh, that's a bit rubbish, but once we get to spells, I'm sure we can get around it. Spell save DC. Probably won't even use this one if you can get away with it. But if we do, uh, 8 plus int plus prof. 10. Staying on theme, it's like I planned it. This 10 malarkey cuts both ways. If the average d20 roll is 10.5, then even a monster that has no saving throw bonus is more likely to succeed than fail against one of our spells. Passive perception is 10 plus perception, so 10. Speed, uh, that's off race, we'll come back to that. Initiative is off dex, so 0. And armor class is, guess what? Yep, it's 10. Are we done? Oh, uh, max hit points. A uh, level 1 for a wizard, that's 6 plus con mod, so 6. And at higher levels, 1d6 plus con or 4. I'd probably recommend taking the 4. Does that make me a min-maxer? Probably. Okay, moving on. Class features. We still get the full benefits from Arcane Recovery, and at later levels, Spell Mastery and Signature Spells, as they aren't affected at all by any of our stats. We still get all of the spell slots for our level, so at first level, we get 6 first level spells and 3 cantrips. Great, no problem there. Here's the only drawback to this build, and it's this restriction, which is going to make it a really interesting challenge to play. Preparing Spells. You prepare the list of wizard spells that are available for you to cast. To do so, choose a number of wizard spells from your spellbook, equal to your intelligence modifier, plus your wizard level. Minimum of one spell. At level one, we can prepare zero plus one is one spell. One spell. At level two, we can prepare two spells. And at level three, we can prepare three spells. So our prep spells is completely based on our character level. Oh dear, at first level, we still get two slots, but we can only prep one spell. It's just like basic D&D all over again, but this time, we gain the fighter's linear progression. Not sure if that's a good thing. At least we get some cantrips to use, with our mighty plus two to hit. Mm, I think more of a utility rather than combat focus build is in order with this one. Ritual Caster is definitely going to do a lot of the heavy lifting with its build. It lets us cast ritual spells without using up any slots. And, more importantly, we don't have to prepare them first. This is great. If we do a ritual heavy wizard, we can still get a lot out of it without having to worry about the prepping rules or the lackluster attack bonus. It also gives us a ready excuse to hide in the back with our dismal HP. If we survive to level 2, we have to make another choice. There are a few good options for us with the arcane traditions. I wouldn't recommend Enchanter, Abjurer or War Wizard, as you won't get the most out of them, as they will have features that rely heavily on your non-existent modifier. Weirdly, Evoker and Necromancer, probably the most combat-focused schools, can actually work quite well. If you hit with a Necromancer spell, you get some HP back, and a bump to your undead at level 5, which comes off your wizard level, not your intelligence. 
Evoker might be a bit of a struggle to pull off with the lower hit chance and the limited number of spells you can prep and then throw at your opponents, but you can still sculpt all of your spells, and Potent Cantrip at later levels makes creatures take at least half damage when they inevitably succeed on your saving throw. So if you took, say, Acid Splash or Poison Spray, you might get a bit more out of them with an Evoker. Diviner gives you the portent rolls, which you can save when you absolutely need them. So if you do prep a Fireball, you can make sure that you're going to hit at least one opponent. It also works pretty well thematically. The scores of Illusion, Transmutation and Conjuration can also work really well with this build. If you want to go the Utility Wizard route, these are probably your best bet. The Transmuter can cover holes in your defences, the Illusion spells might be easy to save against, but you can have a lot of fun with them, and the Conjurer gives you a mix of Utility and Movement races. Normally when I build a character, I do race first, but since we're ignoring the racial bonuses to our stats, you can do it whenever you want, and this opens up a lot of options that you wouldn't normally think about when making a traditional min-maxed wizard. You could take Stout Halfling or the Variant Human for the feat. Any race that gives you a bit of innate spellcasting can help this build out with more options. You could go the Mountain Dwarf route for the medium armor proficiency, which would definitely boost your survivability a great deal, as soon as you can buy some medium armor. The monstrous races from Volos are actually particularly good with this build. The Hobgoblin's saving face ability gives you an emergency stat boost. But I think I'm going to go with Kobold. You get dark vision, but also sunlight sensitivity, which gives you a story reason for missing a lot. You also get pack tactics, and that extra advantage will help a lot with this build. Giving your team advantage by cowering on the ground is also a great buff when you're fighting a big bad, and fits the feel of a cowardly, not very good wizard. Spell selection. Right, here's the tough one. Three cantrips. Okay, so... Message, Mage Hand and Prestidigitation could be useful with this one, as could Minor Illusion, Mending and Dancing Lights. None of these cantrips rely on any of our stats. True Strike isn't going to be worth it, but taking an attack cantrip is probably always going to be a must for D&D. Ray of Frost and Firebolt both have range, so you can have a go and then move into cover or out the way when you inevitably miss. You can also use Shocking Grasp in a targeted way, so it's more likely to hit. Let's go with that. Pack Tactics, or Metal Armoured Foes, can boost your chances of a hit, while the damage isn't modified anyway, so we're still going to hit as hard as any other wizard. If you went Evoker, a saving throw cantrip could work in the long run, but I'll probably wait until I got to a higher level before taking one. Six spells. As we only get to prep one, I'd suggest going heavy into rituals so you can get the most out of them. Luckily, wizard gets the most spells to pick from. Comprehend languages and find familiar are a must. Identify and detect magic can help overcome our lack of intelligence, and either Tensor's Floating Disc or Unseen Servant are great for moving things around or solving puzzles. For our one prepped spell, we want something that doesn't need an attack roll or a save ideally, and hopefully avoids concentration. We can still take damaging spells, but most of them aren't going to work very well. You could do Sleep, Colour Spray or Grease. Fog Cloud and Magic Missile always work too. After all, Magic Missile doesn't need you to make an attack roll, so it's a guaranteed hit. Burning Hands or Thunder Wave still would do half damage, even if the monster succeeds, but they might not be the best choices at level 1. Featherfall's not bad, but to be useful, will rely on you falling off things a lot. Mage Armor's only going to boost your AC to 13, so it might not really be worth it. Shield's always decent, no matter what sort of wizard you build, and if you really want to, you can take Expeditious Retreat if you want to go full Rincewind. At higher levels, you can subvert the rules with buffs, summons, and environmental manipulation, very few of which need you to make a roll or force a save, so we can ignore our rubbish insta. Things like Gust of Wind, Enlarge Reduce, Knock or Misty Step don't use any of your stats at all. By the time you get to level 5 you can start summoning creatures or raising zombies, which gives you something to fight with and it uses its own stats. A lot more utility options open up to help your team and avoid danger. And this is just the core book. Xanathar's has plenty of spell options that can work, especially the summoning and the transportation type ones. Best feats for this build. Well, uh, Lucky, assuming it's not been banned already. Tough's also good, you'll definitely still want some more HP if you can get away with it, with this type of wizard. Uh, Magic Initiate's another good one, you get an extra spell and some more cantrips. It's a good choice to pick Mage Armor for this one, as you're probably only going to use it once a day anyway. Mobile is a very good feat for running away. If you want to be an amateur Rincewind, take Linguist and Mobile, job done. Keen Mind, Observant and Alert are also decent for this build. Mage Slayer? Uh, advantage on spell saves if you get in another wizard's face. It's a bit of an unlikely one, but if you really want to, go for it.
Spell Snipe is probably not going to be worth it with this one, as you're going to miss a lot with attacks, and you're probably not going to be worried about cover if you can barely hit anyway. Warcaster's not bad for the advantage on concentration checks, but if you ain't Kundra, it's probably going to be worthless at level 10 anyway. Workarounds for Quitters and Chickens There are a couple of other things you can do to tip fortune in your favour. Magic items are a pretty good stopgap measure. Uh, some let you cast extra spells, others give you an attack or damage boost, or even a bit more utility if you need it. You can get or provide assistance and advantage on rolls with the help action, and you can use your interesting build to hoover up as much inspiration from your DM for those absolutely must work this time really no honestly definitely needs to work rolls. Ability score improvements. Okay, I said these were for quitters that want to multiclass out, but you could also use them to show your character's progression over time and make them more heroic as you play. They'll have really earned it with this build. Right, that's your lot. Taking 10 for a wizard on hard mode. How would you make an effective and fun character if you could only use 10s? Do you think another class would handle it better, or are some classes just broken if you don't have any modifiers? Let me know downstairs. Thanks for watching. Take a rummage in. Hang on a minute. What? You said one. What? Minimum of one spell. Preparing spells. Choose a number of wizard spells from your spellbook equal to your intelligence modifier plus your wizard level. Minimum of one spell. So, if we use int as our dump stat and have an 8, we'd get a modifier of minus 1. So at level 1, our wizard gets to prepare minus 1 plus 1 equals 0 spells, but it says minimum of 1, so we still get 1 spell. At level 2, we get minus 1 plus 2 is 1, so at level 2 we get 1 prepared spell. And at level 3, we get minus 1 plus 3 is 2 prepared spells, so we're always going to be 1 behind our level. Wow. Insanity mode, anyone? Aha! I was right. Up the badges. Ugh. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.